Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our gazelle and we're doing navigation. We have two navigation methods in here. One is ADF, automatic direction finding, and the second is the Nadir system. We're going to look at ADF first because it's just simpler. So basically if I go out to F10 here, uh, this the ADF, automatic direction finding, relies on a series of beacons spread around the map. Uh, these beacons emit radio signals in the kilohertz range. Okay, now we're going to find one here. Not all of them are shown on the map, uh, but some of them are. I don't know the reason for this. So there's one here eight miles away, and if I zoom in, you can see it's currently rated at 265.00 kilohertz, and its code name is D. Oh, what we're going to do is we're going to tune into that frequency on our VHF ADF system and that is basically going to give us a heading from us to that beacon. Uh, now we can't get range information because this is a one-way system only so this sends coded radio signals out in all directions um, and we receive this on passive sensors but we can't send any signals back so we can't handshake with it therefore we can't get a range to it so we're basically just going to follow a needle that will point us once we're connected to this uh, beacon take to the beacon and we know that we'll be over that beacon um, once we once basically the needle starts spinning around because as soon as we get over the top of it it's basically no longer in front of us and it will soon be behind us that's how we'll tell when we're over it now one thing to point out that this system is used um, around the world and it also used as well for general navigation as approaches so a lot of air bases will have what they call an inner and an outer beacon so if we look at this runway roughly here uh, if I get, draw a line out here this runway may not have it because it's uh, probably a bit uh, more updated than than to have inner beacons but we'd have an inner beacon about one mile away from the threshold of the runway there and an outer beacon another mile away so two miles from the threshold in line with it there and what we would do is follow we'll get to the first beacon navigate to the first beacon with adf then navigate to the second beacon with adf and then hit the runway and that's how you do adf navigation for approach and you'd know when you go over those two beacons because a like we said the needle will move suddenly for the directional needle and you also get an uh, a tone in the cockpit when you go over one of these inner or outer uh, uh, directional beacons and that's how you'll know you're one mile or two miles away from the runway we're not going to use it for landing today um i should say you'd only use that if you were in low visibility and uh, you had to use it because you couldn't see the runway we're just going to use it for general navigation uh, and that's it so let's look at how we set this up so we're back in the cockpit and we've got our uh, ADF system right down the bottom here now it's under the collective it's impossible to look at so we're going to press the 2 key and switch to uh, the um, commander seat right here's our system here the first thing to note is we've got two dials a left dial and a right dial that means we've got two ADF stations uh, programmable in this um, in this particular ADF system that's useful because it means we can have two frequencies set as we were talking about the inner and the outer beacon earlier you can set the outer beacon in this first one here and then you can preset the inner beacon on this preset here and then you can switch between them like that with the click of one button and that makes it easier when you're trying to switch from outer beacon to inner beacon to come in on a final approach especially if you're on a fast moving aeroplane you'll need it to do quickly but in a helicopter it helps as well so that's what that is uh, the one with the cross is the one that's not selected so this one is selected at the moment okay now just excuse me as i try and get my head set down here the next thing is when we tune into the uh, station we'll be given uh, beeps in the form of morse code and that is related to this code name do here it'll basically um beep us uh, with a morse code for that code name and we'll use that to check that we are in uh, tuned into the right beacon as we'll show later next is our master control we have off here we have antenna mode uh, can you explain antenna mode star um yeah first of all it will override your tone switch so even if it's on you will always hear the morse code and generally speaking this would just be used to be able to more clearly listen to the morse code but you will not get any uh, any heading information as long as you're in this. Roger. And then we've got ADF, which includes the heading information, which we'll be using, and we've got test for test. So we're going to go back to ADF. Now, there is also a knob on top of this. So I'm using left and mouse right button on the base of this uh, controller to do that. Then we've got a, a volume control button at the top here, and you'll use your mouse scroll to change that. So I'm going to change it clockwise as much as I can to make the signal nice and loud. Okay. Next, we've got the frequency controllers. That is here. It's a three-stage pyramid, and it's incredibly difficult to use. You have to hover over the correct pyramid to change the correct digit. 
So we're going to try doing that. Now we looked at our beacon and it's 265. So we're going to hover over the base of the pyramid and change, use the mouse scroll wheel to go to 2. Then we're going to go to the next pyramid and go to 6. Then the next pyramid. It's really hard to do. Tell you what, I'm just going to change it like this. And we've got 265. We've got the right one selected. Uh, so we're all good. We're in ADF. So what I'm not hearing is my um, t uh, Morse code. Why am I not hearing my Morse code? Is it because we've got no line of sight? Oh, it could be a uh, few too low, but I do currently hear it. So maybe just try uh, turning it louder. Or is your tone on off? Oh, silly me. Yeah, I accidentally forgot to set my tone on. So to basically to hear the tone of the Morse code, you need to set the tone switch here to on. I forgot to do that. So on. And now you can hear the Morse code. Right. So let's work with the Morse code. So we're going to go into Google now. In fact, can you do it, Stahl? Can you go into Google and get a Morse code translator for DO? All right. So D would be long, short, short. And O is long, long, long. Right, so we're looking for long, short, short, long, long, long. Right, now let's listen. Long, short, short, long, long, long. So that was our method of confirming that we are, uh, are um, have indeed tuned in to um, 265. Now the reason we do that is because it's a little bit spurious you can tune into 265 but sometimes that, sig that signal frequency can drift a little and you may have to tune into a slightly different frequency to pick up 25 i know that sounds weird but that's why we have the check there so to make sure you're into the right station and you're going to the right place right next thing we're going to our driver position and our dash on our hsi this needle is pointing towards the signal interestingly that's telling us to turn left um as well as that we've got a range counter here now that doesn't work for reasons to spade earlier right are you ready to go for a ride Charles? yep Okay, up we go. So I'm going to turn left onto the signal. So I'm chasing my HSI signal. So I've got the HSI signal there pointed at the 12 o'clock. That needle there pointed at the 12. You can see that we do have a range here, uh, but it's completely irrelevant. It's, it's not relevant to what we're um, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, the range information actually comes from the nerd ear. If you turn it off, it should vanish as well. So it's ever so slightly off to our right now. So what we're trying to do, obviously, is get that needle, the ADF needle, into the 12 o'clock position. Right, and what we should see when we get there is that this beacon should be right in the end, uh, right at the end of Dubai International Runway. So we'll see how that pans out, if we've done it right. One thing to notice is that this system needs line of sight. So if there's houses or a hill or whatever between you and the um, transmitter, the beacon then it won't work so that's just one thing to bear in mind and therefore if you're going a long distance because these transmitters these beacons can send long distance signal uh, you need to be up quite high okay now we know we're getting close to the beacon because that is uh, Dubai International there so what we're going to start to see is that needle start to move and we're gonna have to start chasing it when it moves and you can see the needle is moving faster than I can chase it now but that means we're just about to head over the needle let's just stand by and boom, it's changed to the opposite side. We've just headed over, directly over the beacon, and that's navigated us to right to the end of Dubai runway, just like we thought. So that is how to use the ADF. Um, anything you want to add to that style? No, no, I don't think so. It's pretty straightforward. Right, I'm going to go land now, and then we're going to look at the Nadir system. Right, so we've shown the ADF. Uh, now we're going to look at the Nadir system. Do you want to give us a quick uh, overview of uh, how that works, style? Yeah, sure. So the Nadir system is uh, primarily a Doppler nav system, although it does use a couple of other parameters as well to correct the navigation data. It will also use uh, air velocity sensors and gyro data. But in principle, how Doppler navigation works is you have several little radar beams uh, coming down diagonally from the bottom of the aircraft, and they measure the velocity uh, of the ground that's moving underneath you, or of you moving over the ground, and thus it's calculating where you currently are. Roger. Okay, so let's look at the controls we've got. So we've got brightness knob at the bottom left, master, uh, sorry, it's this panel we're looking at, basically, this is our navigation panel. Um, so we've got master command here, we've got aret for off, and then we've got veil for standby, and so these warning lights will come on. Uh, the air light will go off after 40 seconds, these two will go off after 70 seconds, and once they've all gone off, it's ready. Then you've got terror, 
That mode is for use over land. Mare, if used over ocean. Animo, I forgot, what is that stuff? Uh, it is not implemented, but it is a backup mode, just in case the Doppler system fails, then it's just gonna use air velocity sensors instead. Roger. And we've got test sol, which is a test mode, we're not particularly interested in that. Uh, we've got yeah, it's, it's pretty simple as well, if you flip it up all the way, you can see air, air, nav, and pane. And if you leave it there, after 10 seconds the panel light should go off and everything else will just stay. That will tell you it's currently working. Roger, I'm just going to finish my warm-up. Uh, right, do you want to go through the um, parameters selector, which is this? Yeah, sure. So the parameters basically are what uh, the, the system will show you. So you have a bunch of different settings, starting from the left. Vent is for wind. So you have two lines. The top line will show you uh, the current heading of the wind. The bottom will tell you the speed in kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. Then the CMDEC gives you your current magnetic heading uh, as well as the magnetic declination of the of the area of the rock you're currently flying in, which can be quite useful. Mm -hmm. step gives you your current ground speed as well as your deviation from the track towards the next waypoint, uh, also in degree. Mm -hmm. uh, Thamescap will give you an estimation of the time that you're still going to need to reach your target based on your current ground speed as well as a heading. Um, PP just shows your current position and BUT is your main navigation mode that shows you your next waypoint. Roger. Maybe we should also talk about the keypad first a little bit. So you have a bunch of different buttons there. Uh, ENT stands for ENTER, that's pretty straightforward. DES is for destination. AUX is auxiliary. There are a couple of auxiliary modes. Uh, we'll look into those later. I see uh, is called map indicator. Frankly, I'm not entirely sure what that does. The manual isn't really clear about that. In the second row, you have an arrow down, which you're going to need because some things you can input, particularly UTM coordinates, require three lines. Uh, also, if you want to move from the top to the second line, if you want to input something, you're going to need that. Pull is for polar coordinates. So if you want to tell it to go uh, from a certain point in a certain direction, a certain distance. Um, GeoUTM changes which coordinate system you're currently using, so it's either the geographic one, which is the standard um, degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes. Uh, UTM is a different system that you can also use, which I'm not quite so familiar with personally, so I'll stick to Geo, thank you very much. Um, the, pos the postfix is something that, again, the manual is not very useful for. Uh, it just says it's a store position button, but I haven't actually found any use for it. Shell um, is explained as a freeze button. Basically, um, it's like saving something to your clipboard on a computer that you can then paste in somewhere else later on. And EFF is a delete button, so if you're currently inputting coordinates or something like that, uh, you can just push that and it will delete the last digits you put in. If you hold it for two seconds, it will cancel everything you did and just bring you back to the last main mode you're in. There are also four buttons you will need to input coordinates um, to give cardinal directions. Uh, those are on the two, four, six, and eight keys. As you can see, it says NWE and... Oh, I mean, you can have a look at how we actually select the waypoint. That is very simple. If you if you are currently in dot mode, all you have to do is press a uh, number button. Yes, absolutely. You should get to Terra Master mode and but on the parameters like... Yep. Yeah, at the bottom left you can see your current waypoint number and you can have up to nine waypoints saved. So if you just push any of those number buttons, they are, since you didn't program any waypoints uh, in the mission editor, they're all set to our takeoff point right Roger. now. So we've got one waypoint as per standard, which is our takeoff. Shall we add a new waypoint somewhere and fly to it, Stahl? Right, so let's go to our map, F10. We're there. Let's set a waypoint. Um, let's just go for that point where I'm going to put a point in. Let's zoom in. Okay, so if I hover the mouse cursor over that point and I look up and left, we can see we get northing and easting information. Well, that isn't how the Nadir works, so what we're going to do is press left, alt, and Y. And we can see we've got a new set of coordinates. It doesn't want that either, so left, alt, and Y again. And we've got the type of coordinates that we want. What are these called, Stahl? Uh, these are all just geographic coordinates. It's just a different format. You have decimal minutes instead of minutes and seconds. Roger, so I'm going to type my, my, write my northern down two five. One four three six six and easting five five two six 
and 216. So we could have done this in the mission editor and set it up, but we're showing how to do it in the cockpit, basically, okay? Right, Stahl, I'm ready to enter my new waypoint. Please tell me how. So, you want to go to the BUT mode? Yes. And you want to choose your per your preferred coordinate uh, system by pressing the GEO or UTM button. In this case, we're already at the correct one. Yep. Um, now you press the waypoint that you would like to set. So, let's say we on our program we point two and two. you press enter and you will see that the latitude will start to blink yep. you'll have to delete all of those coordinates that are already in there if you press it off enough you can also delete the n which stands for northing right i'm now going to type in our new desired course two five one four three six oh, i won't let me take uh, um, i won't let me tie the last no. digits that's okay it's just uh, one percent. Roger, how do I get down to the next number? It's the down arrow? Uh, you, exactly. Remember? Right, I'm going to delete that lot. In fact, I'll leave the 5-5. Five five. I'm going to type in 2-6 and 2. Right, so how do I... Well, one, th one, yes. one thing to note, if you, if, you don't have your, if you don't have the northing or easting already set, because you deleted it, you will have to push the 2, 4, 6 or 8 key that's relevant for whatever you're currently inputting. Roger. So I've put the northing and the easting. How do I accept it? Enter. Yep. You know, right, we've now got a waypoint two. Um, so remind me how to switch between waypoints again. Do I just press one or... Um... If you're currently in BUT mode, yes, you just press the, the number. Okay, so that's waypoint one, waypoint two. Okay, so waypoint two, and now let's look at the instrumentation we're going to be using to follow uh, that waypoint. So we've got our HSI here and it, the fat needle is going to point towards our waypoint. Simple as that. So we need to orientate ourselves so that fat needle is uh, reaching the 12 o'clock position. Then we're going the right way. And we've got the distance here and it's metric. That's 4.3 kilometers, not 43 kilometers. Um, so are you ready to go and fly there, Star? Yeah, sure. Uh, one last thing to notice, uh, to mention maybe. Um, if you look at the Nadir and you press GUTM to change coordinate system, Yes. And you press enter to go into the editing mode. Yes. If you don't hit the down button twice, you will see a new two-digit yes. code that you didn't yep. see before. Yes. That is basically a third line that you will have to input just as all the other stuff. Is that elevation? Uh, if you input. No, that's not an elevation, that's an area code. So the UTM basically just splits everything, splits the entire world map uh, up in squares. I think they're like 6 degree squares or something. Um, and this is the square code, and the other coordinates you input are uh, within that square, the exact Do we need to do this even though we're typing in geo mode? No, we don't. Okay. It's just for people who prefer the UTM coordinates, that is something to mention. Roger. Right, so let's take off and go and fly this thing, Star. Right, turning on 080, we Off we go. Okay, caps on course. And what you can see is that even though we're following our Nadir line, our ADF line from earlier is still tracking our um, earlier beacon. So you can have them both operating at the same time if you wanted to do that for any reason. Now, this, uh, w when I get to this waypoint style, and let's say I had a third waypoint selected, would it automatically switch me to that third waypoint, or would I have to switch it manually? Uh, well, if you'd have to switch it manually. Roger. So what we'll do is we'll get there and then we'll switch to waypoint one just to show it switching. Right, I'm about to hit my my waypoint two, point three, two hundred meters, one hundred meters, and that's it. Zero. We've hit the waypoint. Okay. And now, if we wanted to move our next to uh, another waypoint, we would just click one in BUT mode. Sorry, there. And now it's taking us one twelve point seven kilometers in that direction. For, uh, for waypoint one, uh, it's all pretty simple to be in a Is um, anything else you want to do on that? Yeah, there are quite a few more things you can do. First of all, you, you can have a look at all the parameters that you can actually have displayed, since we already talked, since we only talked about theoretically. So. Roger, I'll tell you what, Stahl, just to make it easy to concentrate, I'm going to go land. So just give me a second. Okay, I'm down, Stahl. Right. Give me a second, I'm landing myself for that. Roger. If you turn our parameter selector all the way to the left towards the vent. Yes. You can see we currently have zero wind, um, so we also not getting heading obviously. Uh, top line would be the heading in degrees, bottom line would be wind speed in KPM. Mm -hmm. If you move it to the second position, uh, you get the magnetic heading to your current waypoint. Mm -hmm. 
as well as the current magnetic deviation or um, declination as it's called. Understood. If you move it over to VS there, um, you get your current ground speed mm -hmm. as well as your deviation in degrees from the current waypoint, uh, which is going a bit haywire okay, if you're in the ground. Yeah, yeah. But if you wanna, if you wanna take off a meter or so and just turn a little bit, just use your rudder. You'll see as soon as you turn towards the waypoint, it will go to zero. Yep, I see that. So I'm pointed at the waypoint there. Okay. Oops. Uh. We landed. It's good. It's good. Yes, Charles. What next? Okay, the next one is TPS cap. Um, if you turn it towards that, you'll get the heading towards the next waypoint as well as the estimated time towards the waypoint. Yeah. Since you're currently on the ground no, no, no. moving, it'll show all mines. Is that seconds? So that, is, uh, that is minutes. Roger. Uh, then, if you switch it to PP, that's just the current own coordinates where you currently are. Roger. And again, BAT mode will just show the coordinates of the waypoint as well as the waypoint number you currently. Okay, that was all pretty simple to be honest. Alright, so for example, if you feel like it, you can uh, set up a waypoint where you currently are. Yep. So you can find your way back. So you would do that by switching to PP parameter mode. Yes. Then pressing the shell button on the keyboard. Roger. So that, that basically copies it to clipboard, so to speak. Yep. So you move the parameter thing back to butt. Yep. Waypoint 3. Press the waypoint button, exactly, and then just enter. And now if you switch between PP and BUT parameter, you should see it's exactly the same chord. Yay. So waypoint, so we've got waypoint 1, which is the original base. Waypoint 2, what we set. And waypoint 3 is where we are now. Very good. You can also copy our waypoints if you feel like it. So if I wanted to copy waypoint 3 onto waypoint 4 now, I would go to button, press 3, press shell again to copy stuff, uh, press 4 and press enter. And now if you switch between 3 and 4, you will see that those have now become the same. So right, okay, so waypoint 3, I'm going to go gel to copy that. I'm going to go waypoint 4, oh, enter, waypoint 4, Enter. Enter is how you copy. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yep. And now, uh, if you compare the coordinates of waypoints three and four, they should be the same. They're literally a tiny dot out, but basically, I think that worked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that worked. It was a bit. I was a bit finicky. It's my first time using it, but okay. So that's how you copy new waypoints uh, to new slots. Uh, one thing that would be even more interesting if you're talking to, for example, a ground commander who has artillery or maybe something like an A-10 driver, you can actually uh, set a waypoint using polar coordinates. So if you go to your to your camera view, uh, the camera will give you a heading towards the target you're currently looking at, as well as you as well as if you laser it a distance. So, if, for example, I wanted to, say, um, get a waypoint 5 kilometers at a heading of 343 from my current position, I would go to the butt mode, press pole, zero, and then the waypoint number. Pole zero 04, right, I've got two numbers, but yep. Then you press enter and you can start editing those numbers. So, I want a bearing of 343. Down and I want a distance of is this in meters? This is in meters. So I want 5,000, yeah? Mm hmm. 5,000. Enter. Yes, okay. So it's now modified this uh, waypoint four so that it's not my position anymore. It's now 5,000 meters away at bearing 343. Also, verify that if you're looking at your sign. Very good. Uh, so this would be very useful working together with, again, artillery, A-10s, all that kind of stuff. Um, one thing to note, if you are using your camera to get the bearing in the distance, mm -hmm. the distance will be slightly too long because, you know, you're not... You're basically measuring the distance diagonally from the ground. Yes. Over the ground. Understood. Um, if you... It's not going to matter much usually. It's going to be a slight difference. So I tried it earlier and it, uh, I think... 270 meters over over three kilometers it was like a 10 meter difference okay. after doing the math but if you're reasonably on level ground and if you are really high enough that it might make a difference uh you can use our good old friend pythagoras mm -hmm. to 
to do the calculation since you know you, you do have yeah a 90 degree triangle uh, yeah. between the ground underneath you your own position and the ground position so that that's what you could do to uh, make that more accurate okay so that's how to find that's how to find the waypoint position of something you've seen through the camera basically so i didn't yep. show it very well earlier but you can get the uh, the heading um uh from from here on the camera and you can also get the range if you press the laser button we go through that in the uh in the mic um version tutorial okay anything else you want to go for before we sign off star yeah i think the last thing would be the auxiliary modes of which there are several um they're just minor things but they can be useful at times um, so if you press the AUX button and then one of those number keys, you come to the auxiliary modes. Now one thing to note, 0, 1, as well as seven, uh, 8 and 9 are not actually implemented. Well, I think the 1 technically is, but it uh, doesn't work properly. Um, so if you press AUX and then 2, yeah, you should get an X and Y saying, for me currently, 207 and 39. Um, I must have fucked up, so how do I, get, how do I cancel this? Uh, hold the EFF for two seconds. And then let go. Okay, so I'm going to go AUKS. I'm going to go 2. Okay, yeah, I've got an X and a Y. So what's it, what's it giving... Is this... What's it giving me? This is basically a test for your nav system. Uh, it should show something in the range between 217 plus minus 13 in the top row. Yeah. And 47 plus minus 9 in the bottom row. Yeah. Now if you go to AUX 3 instead, that's going to give you your current ground speed. Yep. You don't have to go, you know, back first, you have to can do it directly. Mm -hmm. um, AUX 4 is going to give you your pitch and roll angle. Yep. Um, AUX 5 is just a, a display test basically, it turns yep. everything on. Mm -hmm. Uh, AUX 6, quite interesting, that will start counting the distance in two coordinates from the point you were over the moment you engaged this mode okay. in meters again. Mm -hmm. And if you then press 7, you're going to stop it. Cool. Right, okay, so we've done a thorough testing of the Nadir system. We've added waypoints. We've added waypoints to where we are. We've added offset waypoints based on where our aiming camera is based. And we've gone through the auxiliary modes. I think we'll sign off there, Star. Yep. Right, I hope that helps get navigating in your gazelle and we'll see you later.